Jemai, I'm Hannah and I'm Charlotte and welcome to the Purple Sector. So today we are joined by the lovely Helena Hicks and um, would you just like to tell people a little bit about yourself and what you get up to? Yeah so um, I'm Helena and I'm a freelance journalist, PR and social media manager and I am a huge fan of motorsport. Oh that's awesome. So naturally kind of we all have different paths to have become it and fans of Formula One and of motorsport I myself was brought up watching it religiously with my parents. But how did you get into it? So I guess my earliest memory of watching Formula One and things was with my dad. Um, He used to work quite a lot during the weeks and late nights and things. So I wouldn't really see him that much. And then the weekend would be um, time that I got to spend with him and mum. And they just used to watch the, the racing. And I used to, I guess, just be around it when it happened. And as I got older, I got more and more interested and slowly the passion built. And um, now I would say that my dad comes to me for the news and he asks me, oh, who's good? Who should I be supporting? So, yeah, that's how I got into motorsport. Yeah, I think mine was very similar. Like me and my dad watch it together all the time. So it was when I was little, I just remember we was on holiday and we went to the bar and we was watching it or we'd come home and we was watching it. And then, like, my sister got into it properly, like, a couple of years ago. And, yeah, like, I just, it's just, like, I always sit with my dad and watch it. My mum, she sits and watches it just because we're watching it, bless her. But, like, it's, it's, like, so similar. I think, like, it really is, like, what Hannah was saying, like, she watched it with her family as well. So it's kind of like a, a family thing, which I really love. But, like, how do you find, like, being a female fan in the motorsport community? Because I think it's very different to being a male fan. Yeah, I think so. I think there's a, (laughs) it was a lot easier just being a fan. And then when you start to incorporate work into that, suddenly it's like the daggers come out and for every single little mistake that you might make, or if you don't behave perhaps how everybody wants you to behave, then yeah, the knives come out and they will tear you down for, for anything and everything, I guess. So that, that is a negative, but then I do find that most of the girls stick together and spur each other on and that that is a really nice side of it but I don't think I would change it I guess I think that's just what makes motorsport motorsport I guess I would make people be a bit nicer but then you know there's people like that everywhere and that's just part of life yeah because I tend to find that like as someone who's kind of grown up on it and now Doing the YouTube channel, I remember very early on, I think it was maybe within our first two months, I remember contacting Charlotte and saying, I'm really upset. We've had this really nasty message come through and people were being quite catty. And I was like, oh, do I really want to be part of it? And then you kind of think it's a very small minority of the community, sometimes an overly vocal part of the community, which is a bit frustrating. But then there's moments like, for example, with the F-Series with the Women in Motorsport Month, seeing all the amazing content creators and kind of people working in the industry and seeing them support each other kind of carries you through it all. But sometimes you do kind of sit there and go, 2020, and he said it's 2021 then. I'm getting a bit I wish. Of myself. I wish it was. <laughs> Dream is 2021. But it's 2020. Women are probably more vocal, more present in the community than ever before. I think it was back in 2018, the stats showed that roughly around 38% of the fans of Formula 1 were women. And kind of now with the introduction of Drive to Survive and kind of the new fans coming in, hopefully it's kind of pushing more over 40 and into 50%. However, especially with Drive to Survive, bringing these fans to the community, I found that there's tending to be quite a negative reception towards them. Do you find that social media often tries to kind of split the fans into kind of the actual fans the people that have formula one practically in their blood that know all about it like an encyclopedia and then those kind of deemed on social media to be twitter stands or like fangirls no i i don't think so from my experience i guess my timeline is quite um it's quite cleansed in a way like i'm quite I'm quite strict on who I will follow. That sounds really bad, but like I don't 
if somebody is being inappropriate or they're going a bit over the top, then that's something that I don't really want to engage in or um, interact with. So being a fan is absolutely excellent. It is no secret that Daniel Ricciardo is my favourite driver. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I will let that be known, but it's to the point of I'm kind of split in a position where obviously my job means that I can't sometimes say that I want to say or react in a way that I would instinctively react. So I have to kind of filter it down and be like, okay, my employers are not going to be happy if I swear or if I, if I do this and that. But in the, in the community, I think um, there is a, there is a big stigma around the girls in particular that joined around the time, you know, sort of the Norris fans, the Russell fans, the Ricardo fans. And it is very, I don't know how much of it is true. Probably not a lot of it is true. And you do see some hurtful stuff being said or calling them out because they're not a true fan. They've not been a fan of Formula One since day one or whatever. But does it matter? At the end of the day, they're coming into the the community. You should welcome them and you should interact with them because everyone's points are valid. And if you're a person that thinks, no, they're not, um, then I, I don't think that you're a true reflection of what Formula One should be about. Yeah, I agree because like Lando is my favourite driver, but I have liked F1 for ages with Lewis. So it's kind of like you get the negative stereotypes for liking the young one or the cute one or, you know, like people automatically put that on like a label on you. And I know Beth did a video on how drive to survive fans are valid in the community and it was actually really good because you I don't think people realise that some comments are really hurtful and whether you're a fan because of drive to survive or you've watched it since you was two it doesn't matter if you like it for liking it that's all that matters and yeah I, I, I agree with you like anything that happens on Twitter and if me and Hannah see anything inappropriate we unfollow straight away we're not going to have that sort of vibe on our timeline or in our followers so yeah I do think I do think it is kind of difficult because you have a lot of the older fans arguing their points of why they're more prestige or better because they've been fans for longer but F1 is becoming more and more like popular within younger fans and Drive to Survive has helped that and if you don't adapt with the times like social media is massive like McLaren social media, Racing Point social media like they are on point and if you don't if you don't yeah <laughs> if you don't if you don't carry on and adapt with the times then it's you're not gonna carry on like you're not gonna get anywhere so I think like Twitter just needs to be together not attacking each other but yeah like as someone who works within motorsport like what do you think f1 could do to engage with its fans more especially on social media because that is your job that is your role yeah i think since um liberty took over uh formula one things have changed the paddock seems to be a bit more open it's not so much the old white men that are dominating it and it's been really nice to see new um, new people getting a chance and the opportunity and Formula One has become a lot more accessible don't get me wrong it's still the the paddock is still very closed off compared to other sports but it's moving in the right direction and now you've got the tones with the Formula One teams that they're a lot more chatty community engagement has really stepped up they're using gifs they're using videos everywhere they're given a real insight into what their drivers go through what the team goes through um yeah, there's still obviously areas to improve on. It's still very corporate and some Formula One teams even, their tone is very corporate. You can tell that perhaps the person doing the social media isn't somebody who has lived and breathed social media all their life. Um, but I think in the coming years that will that will change a bit more. Um, but yeah, it's going in the right direction and I hope that the sport just continues to open up and extend to new fans. Yeah, I think it's quite an interesting thing, kind of the generational shift over time is... If I always like the kind of analogy of, say, for example, like we've all kind of grown up with Formula One. But if you look back, there were people who were hardcore fans in the 70s and 80s. And then when Michael Schumacher had his rise, they didn't like it. They didn't like the fans that that brought. And kind of over time, you tend to see generations of shifts, like the way Formula One, the way the paddocks operated, 
compared to the 70s and 80s is very different. It's a lot safer and I kind of, I definitely prefer it the way it is now compared to how it was back then. We kind of, we went through very much a phase in like our 2000s and early 2010s where it was under Bernie Eccleston, very closed off. Kind of, I was off the irony was when Lewis would ever post stuff on social media and everyone would be up in arms about it. And I'm thinking, Lewis has got the right mindset here because ultimately it's not going to be the existing fans that keep the sport alive. You have to bring in new fans. You have to develop over time. And I think Formula One's made a lot of progress. I feel like lock. I feel like lockdown and have the current situation has kind of forced their hand in the, especially with the situation with the virtual Grand Prix, getting to know the drivers a lot more, getting to see a lot more of the team's personalities. Was they had to do it because a lot of the kind of pre-existing media that was there couldn't attend the races, or there was no races to be had, and they had to fill the content. That's why I kind of laugh now how. Lando was made fun of for doing the Twitch streams if you look back when he started and even during his Formula 2 career to now the Twitch streaming situation has taken over a quarter of the grid F1 seemed to be really engaged with it and it's now becoming a platform that they're more likely to use and grow in their fan base and I think Formula 1 has led the way in some ways I would say kind of we so I had the virtual fan experience with Williams which I thought was really interesting the way that they went about it but I feel like it does need to pay attention to what other series are doing. For example, I think Formula E does tend to be a bit of a pioneer in terms of fan engagement compared to Formula One. That's really interesting. I wrote um, an article for Eurosport recently and it was looking at fan engagement in motorsport. And within that, I actually had a chat to Lando Norris about his um, Twitch streaming and about why he does it and what he enjoys about it. And it was really interesting just to see the passion that he has for it. Obviously, first and foremost, he's a Formula One driver. But then he has other hobbies. I think, again, in the past, it is seen as Formula One drivers must only drive a Formula One car. That is all they do. They're not allowed to have an outside life. But then you've got Lando come along and, you know, he loves gaming. He loves the competition of it. And it was really interesting to hear that. And I also spoke to um, a gag about um, Formula E and about how that is different and how that really champions fan engagement in motorsport. So you had two very different people you know, they're all striving for the same thing, although their sports are, you know, at the polar opposite. Yeah, I think that's really interesting because obviously in lockdown, it was all a lot of the esports and obviously you got like the lot changed in esports as well. And it is becoming more and more like on the digital side, which is really cool to see because like it's a lot more accessible now. I know it's still on Sky and it's still got the paywall sort of situation, but people can catch up with the drivers online or the social media is always on point it's literally every single lap there's something on on one someone's social media like it's always racing point sending a gift to mclaren when i don't know lance is catching lando it's like and it gets that sort of like funness out of it and i think that's really important that's what really fascinates me like how the teams can use their platforms to get more people involved not even just older people because like my dad will send me a tweet from them and I'll send them a tweet but I'll send him a tweet back do you know what I mean but also like young people like my sister she will always be on Instagram listening to the radio messages or she'll always be on the on Twitter and it's just like it's interesting to see how they can get people more engaged and I love that and just the fact that I think over lockdown for a lot of us like Twitch and like Lando, George, Alex and Charles like that was like a little escape and that was like really good and obviously we just had the interview on Sky of them all together playing the game and it's like really fun and it's like carrying on and I think it is important that they're not just F1 drivers like yes their main role is to drive a Formula 1 car but they are also they also have different lives and their lives are linking into F1. And I just, I think that's really good. Yeah. Have you got a favourite uh, driver to follow on social media? God. <laughs> that's a hard question. I think it's got to be Lando because he just posts so much. And like, like when he's at the golf with George, I, them stories of them like failing at golf is like, that's great. Oh, like. Danny Rick, because he obviously he does his three songs a week. He does his diary on there, and I, I really like that. Um, Hannah, who would you say? Oh, I don't know. This is quite a tough one. I would say Lando. I feel like Lando kind of covers a lot of different things. He's kind of 
one of the ones that you can tell kind of engages more on is Twitter because I tend to find a lot of the drivers, I think it's Alex Albon, didn't tweet for so many months and everyone was thinking, where on earth is he gone? But I have to admit, one of my favourites on social media, and especially now he's got TikTok, and I probably shouldn't say it because I, to to, I do have to write articles on him, is Callum Eilat from Formula 2 because I find his social media to be quite funny and the Twitch streams and things like that. I feel like the personality of the drivers does show through a lot more and it's quite interesting because one of kind of them I would say Formula One wouldn't be what it is today without one person in particular and I would say that's Lewis Hamilton. He's not my favourite one in terms of what he does on social media but I feel like he led the way very much kind of from the 2000 stage when he joined to get increasingly open on social media I feel like he kind of pushed Liberty's hand especially when they joined was to be a bit more open the fact that he's done so many projects like you spoke about Lando is I feel like Lewis was kind of even though he didn't do the gaming he would go and do the fashion shows the magazines the interviews music Lewis is a jack of all trades and to be honest a master of several of them as well which is very interesting but I feel like his position and the fact that Formula One drivers are now more comfortable with using their public profiles for good I feel like that's something we've seen in kind of a lot of sports recently so for example Marcus Rashford campaigning for free school um, meals for children during the holidays is previously it was football sports and politics and kind of public policy or anything like that were very separate and then now you've had people like Marcus Rashford you've had Lewis being a leader in the Black Lives Matter movement and kind of making Formula One become more diverse and recognise that it's got an issue and I feel like it's kind of the new age of Formula One and I'm really excited to see where it goes. The only thing I hope is that Liberty Media doesn't get stuck in some of the old-fashioned trends like the push towards pay TV, like for example during it was at, at the Nürburgring when Lando and Carlos were streaming and they were told they couldn't stream because of the commercial rights and I think those kinds of little things, they need, they probably can't iron out straight away, but I feel like they need to iron out long term and maybe give the drivers a bit more freedom because sometimes it does feel a little bit restrictive. Like there's always something they could give more that they seem to want to give, but there's oftentimes the commercial restrictions behind it. Uh, I uh, I cannot sing Lewis's praises enough. Um, he what he's doing is brave and bold and the fact that he's able to talk freely about you know how we should be pushing forward for human rights and how we should be champion equality it's not even champion equality it's just he's just trying to promote basic human rights that unfortunately quite a few people in this world don't have and the fact that he has received criticism from a number of people and actually high profile sportsmen as well or media that for me that's just absurd lewis should be applauded for for the work he's doing at the end of the day he could just quite happily sit back chill out in monaco or wherever in the world he is but no he's looked at his lifestyle i think things like he's now trying to be more sustainable he's vegan and he's speaking out about things that really everyone should be trying to to speak out about and um, yeah and not only that he goes up and he turns up at a weekend and he absolutely nails it i think i don't think people realize how special lewis hamilton is and how lucky we are in formula one to have lewis hamilton i think it will be when he retires and sort of 20 years down the line we'll look back and say actually he was bloody marvelous but um yeah i just wish that we as, as as the UK and beyond got more on board with what he was doing and supported him a bit more as opposed to just trying to find fault and criticising him for what he's wearing because that doesn't matter. The man is, you know, using all his free time to try and help out. Um, yeah. Sorry, you can tell I'm a Lewis fan. <laughs> I agree. I agree with everything you've just said, so don't worry. I completely agree with that. I just think the way that he's now using his platform to raise awareness for everything is just amazing and I don't think he's ever going to stop it. And I think he has kind of changed the way he uses his social media to before and I think that's a really good thing because he's really promoting and trying to get 
the equality that is needed and I think that's great for him to use how big of a platform he has and I agree I think everyone in our country should get behind him instead of nitpicking at him yeah <laughs> did you see all the things where it was like should he be given a knighthood and it was I can't remember the actual statistics it was like 40 yeah, no or something it was something so ridiculous yeah I'm not happy I was not so happy ridiculous. with that <laughs> I've got one last question for you all and it's obviously in, we're in November we're heading into 2021 what is the one thing you wish Formula One and kind of motorsports in general would do to bring their fans in to make kind of this community even greater than it is oh you <laughs> damn it um that is such a tough question I think it's just keep on moving forward keep on giving the video access obviously with COVID you can't really necessarily go into the paddock and things like that. So it's a lot harder. Teams have had to reinvent the way that they engage with the fans. Um, I love gifts. I've become obsessed with gifts ever since I'm like, I've learned how to make one. That's it. I, I want to give everything. Um, so yeah, let's, let's get out the video content. I think fans just want to be as close to the action as possible. So whether that's done with, behind the scenes garage tour, behind the scenes component information, meet the team personnel. I, one of the things that I find most interesting is getting to meet the people um, that make the magic happen. So um, let's chat to a, a power unit engineer. Let's talk to, I don't know, head of HR, things like that. It's just given that little bit of access. Let's do that. And yeah. Yeah, I think get more fans involved in everything like I think the Clarion box is really good because you get to see behind the scenes of literally every race and I know they can be like 20 minutes long but I love watching that um and just like giving people that that sort of opportunity like there's a lot of not even just fans there's a lot of content creators out there and people like they should try and give them content creators a, a bigger opportunity within the community and just also like I would just love to see, like, when we'll over lockdown, when Will Buxton was doing the Instagram lives and like fan questions, like, just more of that sort of stuff. I know they've got like no time, but just like you said, like, I'd love to talk to one of the back backroom mechanics or an engineer, like, to find out their roles because a lot of people just see like the pit wall, the drivers, that's it. But there's loads of people behind the scenes, and I think that'd be really cool to get every perspective. But I just I just want them, everyone on social media to just up, up their game and just get everyone involved. Yeah, like more gifts, more videos, everything. <laughs> yeah, I don't think some people realise, particularly if you're not a Formula One fan yourself working at a team, I don't think you realise how much a like, a reply, a comment, something like that can mean to somebody. Because, you know, for some people, Formula One is their life. That is what they literally wake up in the morning for and that is what they get out of bed for. So if their favourite team interacts with them, then that means a heck of a lot. So, you know, let's let's bring that in. And obviously, I know it's difficult. COVID, there's been redundancies, there's been budget cuts and things like that. So the resources are a bit more limited, perhaps. I know that that's definitely the case at some motorsport teams, not just in Formula One. But it's all about making the best of that. But then on the other side, it's difficult because Formula One teams have to have to please their sponsors. They have to do a certain amount of corporate tweets. They have to tick the boxes for for partnership deals and mention X, Y, and Z in posts. And yeah, it's all about balance. But I'm all there for the the fan engagement and fan content. The sofa, please. I might just yes. at them on Twitter. Put that on my Christmas list. Um, but for me, one of the things that I liked about lockdown that you saw was the fact you had drivers from different teams engaging. Like we know there's a lot of friendships between some of the drivers, for example, Charles Leclerc and Pierre Gasly, Daniel Ricciardo and Max Verstappen, Alex Albon, George Russell, Lando Norris. The fact that normally you wouldn't see them engaging together on stuff because it would be, oh, we'll do grill the grid in teams and it'll be that kind of way and getting to see those drivers actually have a level of bonding between them and that kind of camaraderie I feel like is intrinsic not just to the sport but also kind of promoted within the community is if these guys can race against each other can put their lives on the line be some of the biggest most competitive people in the world 
and still have a laugh and a joke at the end of the day. So can we? And I would also say for Formula One is to not be afraid of raising its voice is it has a platform and it needs to use it. And I think sometimes it's a little bit fearful of kind of spooking the horse. And in the end, sometimes Formula One has to turn around and say, actually, you know what? Human rights are the most important thing. Nothing else matters but that, because to be honest, that is the truth. And they do, I think they've done a lot, but they still have a long way to go. But that's all we've got time for today. So it's been an absolute pleasure having you on our channel. It's been so much fun getting to chat to you. Yeah, I agree. It's been a really nice chat. So thank you so much for coming on. Um, we'll make sure we leave all links below to all your social medias. So yeah, thank you so much for coming on. Um, I'm Charlotte. And I'm Hannah. Horvath. Goodbye. <laughs>